succinct as I possibly can. I am about to share uh, some video, video footage. I don't think it's but maybe a few, few minutes, uh, but it's of an interview that Kwame Brown did with the family. I think the mother and the brother of Jessica Reed. Uh, if you don't know who that is, that is one of the people who has filed a formal complaint against Charlemagne the God uh, for rape. Uh, and there's a bunch of backstory to this. We already know about the story where he eventually marries a person that he drugged to have sex with. Um, first and foremost, I want to uh, extend my apologies to all of those who follow um, the Black Voice on YouTube, on Facebook, and the podcast. Um, because when Charlemagne the God initially entered, uh, issued an apology, a, a videotaped apology to Kwame Brown and the people in South Carolina. Uh, someone forwarded it to me uh, in a different context. They framed it for me and I didn't take time to look at it. I'm not a fan of Charlemagne the God or the Breakfast, Card and Breakfast Club in Hope. Uh, I have listened to certain specific uh, interviews, for instance, uh, Minister Farrakhan, Dr. Omar Johnson, uh, the wife of DMX, and some others, uh, where I felt like, okay, that's something I can get from this. Uh, but as far as being a fan of the the uh, show in and of itself, uh, no. So there's a lot about Charlemagne the God I don't know because I'm not a fan, I'm not a follower, I'm, I haven't kept up with him. But this story has been resurfacing and resurfacing, and now uh, Kwame Brown who is on a rampage is definitely giving it heat, which it needs. It needs some steam because there's a story behind this. I want you guys to actually just watch the video, listen to this, get to see that there's more to this story than just some girl who put us up in a bad position. Uh, I think we need to look at this and I think we need to also get to a point where we stop giving passes to people. Now, People that have connections to powerful people get protections for a lot of things that others don't. Uh, and eventually when the heat gets turned up enough and it no longer is financially uh, advantageous, they lose that protection. We're, we have to be the ones that turn up the heat. We cannot sit up and accept this. It cannot be acceptable for men especially black men, but any men, but I, the men who should be protecting our black women, it's, it cannot be acceptable to go out and drug uh, young girls or women uh, for the sake of sex with, without their permission. And my whole thing is once you drug somebody, they can't give you consent because they're not in their right mind. So that's that. But I want you to hear what her family has to say. I want this to become a little bit more personal. I want you to get the backdrop of the story. This is going to be a two-part because I'm going to do a live stream on it tomorrow. But I had to drop this uh, today. Somebody sent it to me and I had to drop it today. So go ahead, check this out. Be ready for the live stream tomorrow. It's going to be part two of this particular video. And we're going to break this down uh, psychologically, sociologically. And we're going to talk about the long-term effects of it. We're going to talk about uh, our fascination with celebrities. We're going to talk about how we live vicariously through celebrities and how we end up, because of that, uh, giving them passes for things that they don't, they, they don't deserve passes for. There's so much to unpack here. And I really hope that Kwame keeps pushing this issue because it's so much bigger than his beef with with uh, Charlemagne the God and what Charlemagne had to say about him. But I hope that he pushes this because this is one of those things where I think Jessica Reed deserves justice. I think the case may be too old to open on a criminal basis, but I think we can apply enough heat uh, 
to the powers that be that are providing the covering and the protection that keep sweeping this under the rug. I think that we can be powerful enough as a force with our dollar, with our focus, with our voice. Because I know now, the more I read about this, the more I'm saying about this. I'm not putting it down. Uh, there has to be someone to speak for those who don't have a voice. There has to be someone who stands up and says, this isn't right. And calls a spade a spade. It doesn't whitewash it and, 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 and gloss it over. We need to stop get going along to get along for the sake of maybe getting something in return. You know, and I think a lot of people are doing that. And a lot of people talk about, you know, he did this and he's done this and he's done. That's all good. And the good he's done does not cancel out something of this magnitude. You don't get to go around raping young girls because you help somebody or you hook somebody up. That's not how we're going to do this. That's not how we're going to play this game. Um, and if you want to see that this isn't something that just popped on my radar and I just started talking about, go to the Odyssey Project 21.top and search for the blueprint. And I also search for the code of conduct. And you will find that it's in there, that I've been talking about this for years, years. Uh, and it's something I'm passionate about. So I'm uh, picking up and doing what I've always done. So take a look at this. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment box. If you think it's something that's worth sharing, share it. Uh, you know, it's time to, time to make some things happen. It's time to use these platforms to put in work, uh, to be advocates. Uh, to push for justice, uh, to leverage the voice of our people. I'm excited about it. On that note, I'm about to get out of here. You guys have a great yeah. day. You know, listening to listening to your story, not to cut you off, listening to your story, it just, I just have to ask you a question. How, how do you feel about all the mothers and, and all the women that Charlemagne and even the men that he's befriending uh, Charlemagne has a lot of celebrity black male friends, uh, celebrity uh, black female friends. And <clears throat> the reason why the Go Along, Get Along gang works is because whoever is Charlemagne's handlers, he has connections to a lot of things. So you will find a lot of people, they've been saying it all over YouTube. Well, I like Charlemagne. He helped me do this. He hooked me up with this person. So they'll look past certain things because of the you know, people like that know how to, you know, connect people to things so they overlook stuff. So what do you say to all the black women and the black men that are that are celebrities, especially um, that are friends with Charlemagne? He is a wolf in sheep clothing. OK. They see what he perceives to be they befriend what they think they know you know and so they ignore anything else that's how i feel it, it's happening that way they're ignoring everything because he's doing so much for everybody and you know it's his way of covering you know, and I would tell all of them, open your eyes. Seriously. Open your eyes. Because this is a serious thing that he did. And and I don't know if this is if if my daughter is the only person because um, actually, it, it was mentioned about his wife at one time and some other people that, I mean, he just make a mockery of it. It's okay. You know, it's a, to him, it's acceptable. It's acceptable. And people, people actually laugh and, and go along with this. This is, this is what makes me crazy. How can you go along with a pedophile that talks about, you know, drugging and raping girls? Oh, 
Open your eyes. See him for who he really is. Then decide if he's good enough to be your friend or your associate. Personally, me, if I was in someone else's shoes, I would not want to befriend a person like that. I don't care what he can give me or what doors he can open. So open your eyes. That's what I would actually say to all of those people who, you know, are looking on the outside and not looking in. You know, you know that this man did these things. He tell him, he tells you it himself. He speaks on it himself. He tells you about Spanish fly. And one time I was with a girl and, and all of this, he drug people and rape people. That's what it is. It's not consensual. And that's another thing that I've heard that I want to clear up. The fact that um, people are saying um, it was consensual. And I, I heard someone said that. So in the comments, you know, a few times, it was not consensual. My daughter was raped. She was drugged. She was forced to drink. He kept he had drink this, drink this, trying to persuade her to drink. So this was not consensual. And if you look at the documents, if you look at the, the police report, because right after the incident, she went immediately in the ambulance to the hospital. This was not consensual. And you can see in the report, the, the police report itself, what the detectives wrote in there. She was hysterical. She was out of control. She couldn't speak. She was delirious. She tore up that room, knocking things over, trying to get out when she came to where she can move around because at first she could not even move her body. If you read the statements, the statements, the two guys that we are going after actually took her upstairs. She couldn't run, she couldn't fight, she couldn't protect herself or anything. So it was not consensual. And I wanna make that clear because like everything else, there's so many false things going on and it's got to be cleared and that's why we're here to set the record straight it was not consensual okay um do let's uh let's bring your son into the screen uh for a second give him a chance to speak let me see how you doing brother are you here yeah i'm here how you doing man Okay, go go ahead, brother. Introduce yourself and uh, just kind of tell people, you know, how you felt from a, a male perspective. Like I was telling you over the phone, man. I, you know, my my hat go off to you and God bless you because, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta deal with that every day that you hear the breakfast club uh, breakfast club as well. So uh, I'm yeah. gonna put my mic on mute and just let you go. Okay. Yeah, man. I mean, it's a crazy uh, situation. You know, you're talking about my mother and my sister, you know what I'm saying? I, oh, over the years, you know, I've seen the pain and, you know, the craziest thing is the memory that I have from that night, you know? Um, I didn't want them to go, you know what I'm saying? And I did express that to my mother, you know what I'm saying? And they went anyway. Um, but like my mom said, you know, we didn't get any calls. We are trying to figure out where they was at and if they were safe and then you know, finally we got a call and then that's when we knew that something had happened. Now, like I said, there's a memory in my head, man, that it will never, ever, ever go away. 
You know what I'm saying? Once we got the call, and my mother called the ambulance, and um, called 911, excuse me, and uh, we went to Somerville Medical Center, and I uh, saw my sister in the back of the ambulance, man, and, you know, it's, it's still even hard to talk about this day, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, my sister was back there, you know what I'm saying? She couldn't even walk. You know, that puts something, that puts something in my heart, man, some, some hate. And all I, all I ever wanted to do, and to be honest with you, to this day, man, you know what I'm saying? I, I just want to do this man dirty. I mean, it's not all about that, man. But, you know, I, my mother raised us to protect our sister. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I feel like I failed my sister. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't protect her. You know, I mean, for a while, I looked for dude. You know what I'm saying? I just couldn't get, I, I couldn't get to him. You know what I'm saying? And every time, you know, now you can hear him on the radio, you see him on TV. It's like I relive it every day. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that he came to the house, you know, and picked my sister up and then hearing him talk about it, you know, he act like, oh, it wasn't me. You know, like my mom said, you know, when he was speaking on DJ Academics, um, the video with DJ Academics with the interview he had, he said something was going on in the room with a couple of his dudes. You know what I'm saying? I feel that if you call yourself a man and you know these dudes, then you are obligated to speak on it. You know, my sister told me out her mouth and I and we know the facts that she was violated. You know what I'm saying? And throughout the years, we still struggle with this. You know, personally, my 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 relationship with my sister has been rocky too. And that's something that we still working on to this day. You know, it, it's still a hard thing for the family to deal with. We still trying to get, you know, through it day by day. But at the same time, you know, when you hear this man talking about it on the radio and joking about, you know, situations where you put stuff in females drink and just him just being disrespectful to us black women, period. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who who are the people you with? I mean, like, how 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 come they can't hold you accountable for what you did? You know, don't why forget, uh, hey, excuse me, hold on, let me ask and let me add this. Don't forget when he uh sniffed the chair. I think I yeah, saw a video I saw he that sniffed that the day. chair with J Lo left. I yeah, like, I saw that the other day. I was I was seeing it myself, like what kind of dude I, I mean I already know what kind of dude he is, you know what I'm saying? But you know, yeah. my thing is his circle of people, you know what I'm saying? Like, why is he so protected? There's a lot, like you said, there's a lot of celebrities that he know and people, you know, that he's making money with. You know, why can't one of those people in position of power stand up and say, yo, you know, we got to address this, man. You know, this and with the documents and the stories that he put out and how he spoke on it, you can tell that it's lies. So why ain't nobody stepping up? You know what I'm saying? My mother and my sister has been pushing and pushing and pushing, trying to get support from all different types of people. And they turn their back on them. You know, it's a handful of people, you know, that really supports Jessica and, and want justice for Jessica. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is, is why the people ain't holding him accountable? That's the problem that I have with this whole situation. This man violated my sister. I've seen my sister cry, my mother cry, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I try to, you know, deal with it in my way, but it's hard. You know what I'm saying? I only got one mother and this is my only sister. You know what I'm saying? I And people, you know, on YouTube, they be talking about, oh, she was this, she was that. And they speaking and they don't have the facts. My mother said, you know, she gonna, the email is going to be up on this uh, on this YouTube. If you want the documents, it's there for you to see for yourself. It's there for you to see for yourself. You can tell that the man is lying. We know the facts. But like I said, man, you know, every day I can't I turn on the radio. It's like reliving the situation. I look on TV, reliving the situation. When this resurfaces or something comes up, we, we relive the situation over and over and over again. The other two people that, you know, were involved, you know, we trying to go after them. 
And when we get to them, they're going to fold. And even more of the truth is going to come out. But my thing is, is this man called, he called himself a man. He got a wife. He got daughters. He got a sister. You know what I'm saying? Like, how would you feel if that happened to your your daughters or your or your sister? You know what I'm saying? You can't just sit there and ignore the situation and downplay it like it wasn't nothing because it was. You got a whole family that's been going through years of hurt over this situation. And 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 that's the thing. Like, um, I don't know if legally they're gonna open back up the case, but the people should speak. I mean, yes, um, the people should speak. Yeah, it's we the people, yeah. and, and we shouldn't right. allow stuff like that to go on. And then we still give our money and our advertising to people like that. He's making a lot of money yes. for for the uh, right type of people, so that's why you know they have him up there. And uh, shout out to Star for keeping the yeah, shout uh, out to Star. And shout out to Choke No Joke because I saw a shout lot of stuff that he did as well. So uh, right. I want to definitely yeah. not try to take any credit from anybody. Uh, anybody who shared uh, Jessica Reed's story, shout out to you definitely. guys and everybody yeah. who's watching. You know, it's time to stand up and do something about it. I mean, we have about. the power to do something about it ASAP. So yeah. um, if yeah. you guys want the email, like I said, it's going to be in the description box. And let's show our support, not through just typing in the chat. Let's uh, show our support through, you know, speaking and moving him out of his seat, you know. And right. I can't believe that we've allowed this to go on for so long and just a suppression of information. And that's why I'm here. I got to make sure a lot of us got to start making sure that we give out the true and the real information. So uh, we have we can be the voice for the voiceless. So I, I definitely appreciate you guys. Yes. for coming. And if you have anything else, you know, I'm just let you guys go. Dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.